Thank you. I am digitally challenged. Yes, it's true. And I believe my challenge is a challenge for all of us. Before I tell you what it is, is it okay that I show you with my mobile? Yeah? Cool. Gonna bring up my mobile. Whoa! <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I'm a goldfish memory trainer. My goldfish memory trainer? Yep. I'm gonna send you a notification on email, push, and in app. What? That just sounds like information all over again with extra steps. Yep. And you know what? What? It's the default settings. Lol. Ow. <laughs> I don't want that. Notifications about nothing all the time. I'm going to throw a number at you. 40%. The American uh, Psychological Association found in 2006 that 40% of our productive time is spent switching context between tasks and between um, context. Anyone here remember when the first iPhone came out? 2007, that's correct. So after this survey, we have been walking around for the past 10 years with a goldfish memory trainers in our pockets, right? With notifications and all that. What do you think that does to our brain, our attention span? I'm certain that during this talk, one of you will think about, should I look at my phone? Maybe there's some new notifications over there. I need some more dopamine. Because it turns out uh, that conditioning is happening. And when they uh, did the classical conditioning of dogs, they f uh, found out that dogs love food, apparently. And they don't have a clue what a bell is. But if you ring every time, you will get food, the dog will expect food when uh, the bell rings. Basic conditioning. Well, we are being conditioned too. It's like Sheldon conditioning Penny during Big Bang Theory. So this applies to us as well. That's the major challenge. Notifications about nothing. I uh, did a um, um, view on my uh, phone. When um, I was on off time, for 24 hours, I received 147 notifications. That's a lot. I made you look, didn't I? Have you ever been to a meeting where you have seen an email pop-up or a pop-up from the presenter, and you have read the pop-up, and then you figure, who is this guy sending this to me? You think it's to us. But that's how conditioned we are all the time. That's the challenge. So the number one skill for the 2020s is to master notifications. We need to teach our users that. We need to teach everyone around us how to tune your notifications. It turns out that social media applications have been around for quite some time. And they're actually built on notifications, bringing you into their apps spending time in their apps. So we have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. So I want to show you what, how I tune LinkedIn. Anyone here uses LinkedIn? Yep, a lot of us. And LinkedIn has three different types of notifications. Web and app, email, and push notification. And if you tune the web and app notification, that will also tune the other two. So I'm going to show you five quick tips. Don't worry, though, because I have recorded a YouTube video. So if you go to my YouTube channel, you will find a deep dive into this. So you don't have to take notes or, or something like that. So number one, in-mail notification. That's when someone sends you an, um, not an, uh, an in-mail within LinkedIn uh, because they're not your connection. It could be marketing. It could be recruitment. You don't need a notification for that. You can see it when you are in LinkedIn. Hey, I got an in-mail notification. Number two, birthdays in LinkedIn. Are you kidding me? Turn it off. 
Number three, news. So LinkedIn wants to be my news channel. I don't uh, care for that. So I turned everything around news off because I uh, bet on my connections and my network to trickle up the news I need. And also I follow my own newsletters. Uh, so no, no thanks. Number four, and this is the hard one because it's about you. When people are following you, when people are looking at your profile, but do we really need a notification about that? That's for you to decide, but try to turn it off, see what happens. Number five, and this is a super trick for tuning your timeline. And um, because you have a lot of connections and LinkedIn has been around for many years already. And you have probably a lot of connections, thousands, hundreds maybe, and um, not all of them are equally interesting to you right now where you are right now. So did you know that you can go and unfollow people? Like uh, the Teamsdagen organizers. You should unfollow them. No, but you have the option. So uh, go in, go through all your contacts. You don't have to disconnect from them because you are still connected, but you don't need them in your timeline. So go in and, and tune that, spend some hours. So that's the number one skill. Be conscious about notifications, what you want the information about. And the point is that this is not optional anymore. You can't like, oh, I'm not on LinkedIn, so I'm good. Because now we have this in our workplace as well. With Microsoft Teams, Slack, Yammer, Facebook at work. They are actually built the same way as the social media applications to bring you into their app bring you notifications all around. So let's focus on Teams and how we can tune notifications within Teams. Made you look, didn't I? You are so conditioned. Oh, you are in trouble, people. But yeah, this is from the web uh, version of Teams where it can send you notifications there as well. So if you have multiple apps, you get lots of notifications. Awesome, right? Or should you tune it? Teams has the same way of notifying you as LinkedIn. It's web and in the app, it's email, and it's push notification. And users need to tune this themselves. We can't cater for them. We can't sew pillows under their arms for this. They actually need to know about this. So I believe this is a big cultural training we need to do within our organizations to do this. So users need to go into notifications, and we have notification about a lot. And the default is email and banner. That's the default for everything, which means you get notification about that you have a notification waiting for you in the app where it's a notification about someone trying to reach you, which you maybe have seen already. So notifications about nothing. So go and tune this. I prefer to have um, in Teams notifications, that uh, red number you see, that's what I like, because I am in Teams. But you will also find that there are new notifications introduced, which means that, and they've turned on the default settings. So you actually need to go in and tune this over time and, and tune it for your liking. But th this is the important part, channel notifications. Because after you have tuned our notifications, we can even follow or unfollow channels. And this is the same on LinkedIn when we are following and unfollowing people. So you can go into a channel where people are discussing a topic you don't care about, hide that channel, you remove those notifications. But you can flip it the other way as well, where you can go in and say, I want a notification every time someone posts uh, in this um, uh, channel because it's important for me. This is the most important channel for me, so I, I need information about everything. And to teach users this, this is the skill they need to survive in Teams in the 2020s. Don't you agree? Yes? The mobile app has the same settings, so, but you can tune push notifications on mobile individually. 
And one more important thing is that you have quiet hours that you can have during off time and during weekends. Doesn't mean the notifications will go away, you just don't get a push, push notification on them. So use that. So notifications in Teams, web and app, email and push. And be conscious, people, about notifications. Wake up and see how you get your notifications and tune them so they work for you. It's not optional anymore because it's in our workplace, it's in our social media applications, and we should own this stuff. Don't run away from it. Tune it so it works for you. Got a notification for you, by the way. Oh, sweet, thanks. Yeah.